This is Marty from Voodoo Rod and Custom. What I've got in store for you guys today is a little bit of custom carburetor work. This is a tool that I've been wanting to make for quite some time now. Um, I was going to import or bring one or buy one from the US, um, but the problem is our exchange rate is absolutely ridiculous. It's um, pathetic, really. Uh, then we've got tariffs and taxes, import duties, everything else. By the time I landed this particular tool here in Australia, it was going to cost me about seven to eight hundred dollars, which is crazy. So anyhow, um, there is a couple of guys out there that make this in the US. I think one of them is called All Star. The uh, real high quality in the actual the one I wanted to bring in is made by a company called BLP Carburetors. Uh, look them up; they've got some really good gear. Anyhow, back to my little project here. Um, I had a, a long think, how can I make this uh, user friendly? So instead of boring you guys with the um, construction of this tool, I've got little snippets that I might show you. I'll show you how we can install this booster lead. So what we've got is a 4150 uh, body. And in there you'll see we have two legs missing or banjos. Uh, the bottom uh, right hand side there well, my right hand side is just the banjo on its own and the top left being my left has the actual annular uh, booster with the banjo so what i'll do i'll show you how i screw this to the machine screw this to the uh the carburetor body and then I'll, I'll basically point out what we've got here and how it works Okay, so this is our main body. Um, this is basically, everything gets jigged up off this. And I had a several ways I was going to make this and I thought, oh, how do we do it? So I was almost gonna make it so it came off the bottom here and we had this tool here coming up from the bottom. But I just didn't wanna make it too cumbersome and difficult. So what I've done, we've got a nice machine surface with bolts here. I'm using where the metering plate and the fuel bowl goes on too. So as you can see, this will bolt straight up like so. We'll screw that on nice and firm. Now because this is 90 degrees to the base plus 90 degrees to the top. We're in the right vicinity for where we want to be. And that's why I'm using, or I chose this to jig up and tool off. So there's our, our, our base starting point. So now what we're going to do is, these are our, our booster banjos or booster legs. And this is our annular Venturi, which we'll just basically push in there once the job's done. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll put a bit of Loctite. I'll probably use a really high strength bearing retainer, which is 620. I think there's a 680 as well, I think, from memory. Just so that way we've got something nice. Use my little screw over here. Dove around. Now, depending on what quality banjo you have, is depending on what Loctite you would use. That's just a bit of a personal thing. Um, if you've got a banjo that is a bit of a loose fit in the hole, there'd be a different Loctite that would take up a larger clearance. So just um, just be wary of that when doing a. A project like this so uh, the machined edge there I'll put down and we'll push that in so it's a nice firm fit like so then now this jig section here holds it that way when I put force that way the banjo doesn't push out as there's nothing to hold it in because it is it is basically in a vertical hole so we're in a parallel hole I should say okay so he slides on like so you can see the way that goes over the top. It'll actually touch the top of the carburetor body. So if you have a choke horn or a uh, 
choke housing. Um, this combination won't work. It's actually not pushing in. There we go. So I'm going to cheat and use the rattle gun. I'll make sure that's pushed all the way. Just to speed the process up. Okay, so what you can see there, I've actually given that a taper just with a large drill bit. I think I used half an inch. This here is my swaging flaring tool. And I've given a little bit of a, little bit of a cut there just so I can actually cut some material plus flare and swage at the same time, it tend to want to work a little bit better. Then once we're finished, we need to square up our banjo. So basically this just sits in there, you read the bubble, give it a little bit of a twist which way it needs, and then remove it before the Loctite sets without removing the banjo, of course. Um, so, but anyway, that's the next step. So what we'll do is go over to the drill press there and we will swage this over and you'll see how much of a nice fit that is. Okay, so we're in the drill press. I'll just make sure that lines up nice. Yep, beautiful. You'll see this will flex a fair bit, but we still get the desired result. We could use the milling machine. It just would take longer, especially uh, changing operations and everything. I don't see the need because you're using pressure, plus you're wanting the, um, the drill press to aid and assist you to flare it out. So actually what I might do is just give it a little drop of lube just to help it so we're not going to punish the banjo too much. I'm using quite a fair bit of pressure there. And there we go. That's swaged over. We'll remove our swaging tool. Okay, we'll come over here now. We'll use our rattle gun again, only because it's a speed thing. Instead of having a uh, Allen key, which would take forever. And it's literally holding no weight. It is just holding the the um, the the banjo in place. So that way, when you put force that way, it's not pushing the banjo out of place. So that's that tool there. So now we get our our level finder, which it's not perfect perfect on the mill, but it's within within bubble. Okay, so we're a little bit out. So we'll give it a bit of rotation. Not wanting to play the game. There we go. Done. So now we'll let that lock tight cure and then we'll drop in our annular sleeve. If you want to speed a lock tight cure up, just give it a little bit of temperature. These guys will probably have kittens, but I find this works quite well. You don't need to blast the hell out of it. Just pick up the temperature a bit and that will accelerate the curing process. So there we have it. That's our um, annular booster conversion for a 4150 Holly body. Thanks for joining in. I'll catch you next time.